before I get started, I'm bringing Pat up here to that as my support. But before we get started, I did have the idea to get the box convention together. And after my first letter I wrote, I got a letter from Mark offering that he would do the legwork. I think many a times after that he has been very sorry. <laughs> but if it wasn't for the Fox Finders of St. Louis, I think we owe them a lot of thanks because this would not have this would not have been made possible. They have worked very hard to get this together. They have really come up with a nice agenda. And I would never have been able to get anything together by myself out in California. So I think we all should give them a big hand of okay, We will start on this, and like Mark said, if there's any comments, we will do the best we can here. But if there's anybody that feels that something isn't an inside maybe or has found otherwise contrary to it, please speak up as we go through this. Are we ready to... Just tilt the microphone down. There you go. Okay, it shows a moon. It glimmers through the forest tips. It is a sample calendar, and a lot of these slides have been furnished by Dolores Ramsey that we are showing. She and her husband, so we owe them thanks for it. That's familiar to anyone. Everyone, we have one at home. And the sky of the moon looks a lot like his work. The next one says, Endowed by Nature. It is a 9 by 12 sample calendar. It has no publisher or any other ID on it. This one is browsing by the roadside. It is a sample calendar. <coughs> no publisher or ID. Number four is Blue Ribbons. It's a 1916 sample calendar. And looking at the horses and the girl, I would say it's very much foxy looking. I would have bought it. <coughs> this is discovered. It has its eight by ten color, and it has a red. Registration proof that has no ID of any kind. It looks even possibly that it could be a TV box if not a box. This is early days, Golden West. It's 1228 and it says painting by Charles Stacy copyright by F.A. Snyder is printed beneath the print. <coughs> May I tell you something now? Yes, well, yes. He was, I want to get it straight, <laughs> who was Charlie Stacy, married to Governor Sister. Uh -huh. That's right. So in some way he was related to us and lived in Hatton Fields, New Jersey. Did everyone hear that? No. That Charles Stacy was married to Garnet Sister? Garnet Sister, Sister. And her name was Nell. N-E-L-L. Her, -E her name was Nell. So they are related <coughs> to them in some way. So that possibly is a DB or R.A. Fox. <coughs> Where did they live? Hadfield, New Jersey. Right outside of Philip Delphia. Okay, 
this is an atmosphere of peace. Paint it for, print it for Reliance Picture Frame Company. It's printed on the print. This is untitled. It has author, Arthur on it. No publisher or other ID. Now I have found some that had Arthur printed on them that has been by another artist. I don't know if this particular one is, but he did beautiful ending. But if you note the canal, the canoe on there, and the dress and the headpiece, it's a lot like moonlight blue. If you, yes? Yeah, there, there's been several Indians made print signed by, by James Arthur, and so I would assume that this is that Arthur. It could be. So, uh, uh, there's also some, what's that other one I have in my room? Goddard. Goddard, that they're practically identical also. <coughs> they use about the same canoe, the same dress, the same beads, the hair, same hair bands. And the same feather, and so they either copy them or there are a lot of them out there. Goddard is uh, Leonora Goddard. It's a woman. It's a, it's a woman. <coughs> this is untitled, no identification of any kind on it. I believe that Deanna Halls has that picture signed. It should be. Uh, if you look at the blue and the clouds in the background, and it is Mari Fox's type of picture that he drew. So it's, it's called the old possible. Egyptian times. This one is the Golden Harvest. It's the six by eight, no identification. That's in English. In my opinion, I would say it's a broker to me. Yeah, in R. A. Fox, and just just an opinion. I, if I saw it somewhere, I would pick it up and hold on to it, hoping a sign one would show up. A reliable guardian. No, I jumped ahead of myself. It's Lover's Bower, and it is in a fan that they got it. And it's a half picture. Throw me off a little bit of the little house back there. With a little 
light in the window, but then there's a lot of good work that's probably on. <laughs> This one is also on tile. Mm -hmm. If anyone has ever seen you found any of these with a signature or down the pinion, you know, speak up. That's what we're here for to try and see if we can identify any of these. Mm -hmm. This one is Paul Revere. A sample 1916 calendar and an attached card on it describes Revere and quotes from Longfellow's poem. Real nice print. This one is Glorious Solitude. It's a 1930 calendar. Was made for an A. L. Willow in LaBelle, Missouri. The next one is Under the Light of the Silver Moon. It's a 1931 calendar from Garrison and Company, Woodburn, Oregon. And it definitely looks like that we're been getting their box and they're trying to what they're doing what we have this one is untitled those cows look real familiar One is a collie dog and sheep. <coughs> this is a girl jumping horse over the fence and it's signed John H. Gilbert. <coughs> it's a very fox-like plant. And now we all go out and look for Gilbert. <coughs> This is a sample calendar for home and country. It's a six by eight picture. I have found that sign A P, initial A P. Okay, I Okay, that kind of clears us up. Everybody here? No. Hear that? What? No, I didn't hear it. A P. A P. Yeah. A P. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mary. I think we have that one for one similar, and it's signed George A. King. Then she has A. King, so they probably have the door shut on it. That takes care of that one. Thank you. This one is the call. 